This is Nothing Coherent. I'm Brandon. I'm Zach. And I'm Ryan. So this is our special MCU episode. Dun, 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 I'm super dun. excited for this, actually. Because at the time of recording this, we are still a little ways away from in-game. Yep. But that means that when you're hearing this, you'll be seeing in-game this Thursday night or Friday or Saturday. This weekend, in-game should be opening for you when hearing this. Right. Um, the reason we did this is because Easter weekend, um, I was really busy. I don't know if either one of them were. Um, I will be. And so, so we were just... I'm going to be looking for eggs the whole day. So, so we, we decided that it'd be best to record this. So there's no news. There's no what we've been playing, what we've been doing. This is straight Marvel Cinematic Universe talk. Dun, 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 super dun. excited. We'll probably do this again for Star Wars when Episode Nine comes out. Dun, Just, dun, 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 but dun. Ranking all those movies. Ranking all those, talking about those. But this is what Ooh. I want to do. Um, I can't wait for that. The MCU has meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we had video because even like what I'm wearing right now, you could, yeah. it, it's meant a lot to me. And so... We're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to give our highlights of favorite villains, favorite heroes, uh, favorite moments, and what got us into the MCU. We're going to talk. We're going to try to talk a lot about it. Um, so quickly, how I want to start is I want to reminisce back to 2008. Okay. Um, I remember actually no 2007. Um, do you remember G4 and Attack of the Show? Yes, I do. So on Attack of the Show, um, they aired a clip from Comic Con, which was Iron Man. Yep. It's the scene with him walking out of the cave in the original suit. And just burning everyone. I remember that. And I remember seeing that scene, and my dad walked in the living room when I was playing, and he's like, oh, they're making an Iron Man movie. He's like, we have to do that when it comes out. Yeah. And I was like, okay, and it's like, it's Iron Man. Um, yeah. I mean, I was young at the time. Like, for the record, we, I've, I've been young. I've grown up with this franchise. Yep, all this of us have. series. And so, like, in that moment, I was like, okay, that's weird. And I remember 2008 rolled around, and we went and saw it, and being blown away by yep. what Iron Man was. Yeah. Now... Granted, there was a lot of ups and downs until 2012. Like, I, remember, I was there. I have been to every Marvel Midnight or Thursday Night Screening. Yep. Except for Iron Man 1 and Guardians of the Galaxy 1. The only one for me that I missed was um, Captain America 1 and Captain America 2. Yeah, and a lot of those were midnight screenings. Not yeah. the 7. Not the 7 Not these Thursday. 10 o'clock pansies. Not, not, I was there at midnight. We were there in the trenches. <laughs> like... Fighting those DC fans who dared to show up to my Avengers showing and claim that the Justice League was better and that when they finally got a movie, it would do better than Avengers. <laughs> well, you were wrong! <laughs> but, like, I remember I remember, I remember talking to people at church and, like, mm -hmm. to other friends who did not like superhero movies that Iron Man was the one. They were like, yeah, that no, was good. I know so many people who, like, used to not even care about superheroes and now like now they wear the clothes franchise. they like they wear the clothes they're like oh i relate to this character so much this character is so cool i remember when um for example thor did this and i was blown away by it like yeah like there's it's crazy to see how iron man kick it off mm -hmm. now the one that i my moment my favorite moment not in a movie but experience with the franchise was sitting there at midnight waiting for Avengers to start. Yeah. And finishing that movie and being so blown away that we... I mean, it was like 2.30 at night. 2.30 yeah. a.m. Me and my group that saw it sat outside the theater talking until the second showing got out, which would have been sometime past 5 a.m. Yeah. We sat there and talked about the movie for as long as the movie was. Yeah. Like, I remember... I saw that movie. I wanted to go as many times as I could. I tried to see it over and over and over again. I saw like, it three times in theaters myself. I saw it, My record, my most watched movie, which I'll get to in a second... But Avengers, I saw five times in theaters. Mm -hmm. um, the most I saw was Winter Soldier, which I worked at a theater. So I saw it for free. And we saw the early screening. But I saw it nine times in theaters. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of, like, this franchise that means a lot to me. And, like, I still remember to this day, like, standing outside the theater just talking about yeah. Avengers. And just being, like, the chills, the excitement, being like, mm -hmm. they did it. And then that Monday, turning on the TV, and there was on our local news station them talking about Avengers, talking about how it's this breakout success. Yeah. How, like, it crushed the opening weekend record and everyone's seeing it. And, like... Yeah, and they didn't think it would. Yeah, and everyone used to... And that was the same year Dark Knight Rises came out. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, Dark Knight Rises will do better and be this better movie. But no, yeah. like, Avengers at the end of the day... Made more like, money was and was crazy that a group of five time. heroes outside of the Hulk you had never really cared about or heard of yeah. did this, made this movie. Like, right. Marvel showed... With this B list, C list, D list team, yeah, that, that they you could care and make this amazing movie. So like that for me will always be the moment. That was the moment that solidified that hey, I'm here for this franchise, right? For all it's good and for all it's bad. And I've seen Same. every one of them in theaters, not missed a beat. Some, mo some of them multiple times. Like the Incredible Hulk, I was so into it back then I saw it twice. <laughs> yeah, I saw all of them in theaters when they came out. 
Uh, for me, it's the same. When Avengers 1 came out, I was like, they're really ramping this up. They're, like, not playing around. They're they're here to dominate the box office. They're here to make characters that you've never seen before and, like, really drag them to new heights. Like, I don't think we would have ever seen an Ant-Man movie without the MCU, for example. Like, Yeah, which is crazy because, like, I remember the original Ant-Man movie was supposed to be part of Phase 1, but yeah. there was so much, like... Uh, controversy with Edgar Wright. I remember the footage that leaked out right. and all this stuff. I was always so excited for that movie. There I wish Edgar so still got to do it, but... There was so much going on. Like, everybody was like, oh, they're doing another Hulk. Okay. Like, we just got one like five years ago. Yeah. And I remember the confusion of people thinking it was a sequel at first. And it was like, no, this is its own thing. Like it's kind of, it was kind of a sequel. Like, they, yeah. the opening acknowledged the first one, but not in the same extent that it was like... Right. But, like, not on that level. I remember um, the specific moment um, when the Civil War trailer came out and we got a first look at Spider-Man. Oh, my gosh. And people were freaking out. Like, you can still get on, like, YouTube and watch people's reactions to that trailer. Mm -hmm. I saw a grown man literally cry tears. And he was like, Spider-Man has finally come home. And I was like, this is a big deal. Like, there's big moments that you would have never seen. We would have never gotten team-up movies like this before. Like, I think of, like, back when... Originally, all we had was the X-Men trilogy, the Spider-Man trilogy, and then the Dark Knight trilogy was just, like, getting started. Yeah, Blade was kind of... Blade was there, but, like... But, like, here's the thing with Blade. Fantastic Four. Yeah, but, like, those those weren't seen as really great. And yeah. And was, like, Daredevil or Electro. I, yeah, or I understand what you're saying. The Spider-Man and X-Men movies were held as Like, those were the guard. ones that people were like, these are really good. And Blade is good, too, but the problem is Blade wasn't marketed towards a general audience. Blade yeah. was a hard R film. With, like, vampires and super gory and everything. So, like, we got films that, like, were entertaining and made for everybody to go see. You know, like, you can take your kid to go see Iron Man. You can take your kid to go see Thor. You can take your kid to go see Guardians of the Galaxy and have a good time and not worry about them seeing something that's super graphic or, like, really just, they won't understand it. Like, the movies are made for everybody to watch and understand and Mm -hmm. enjoy. So, like... You've got people of all ages, like, really enjoying this franchise now. Like, ten years ago, I probably would have never seen somebody walking down the street wearing a Captain America shirt. Now I feel like every day I see somebody wearing a Captain America shirt or yeah, I, a Marvel character in some regard. Like, yeah, I was wa- I watch people now, like, just to see. And, like, it's crazy to see how many of them have hoodies that are, like, Captain America or Iron Man or... Like, like Thor, Spider-Man, or even Black Panther. Yeah, oh my gosh, there's so much Black Panther. Yeah. Panther merchandise. Like, and even, like, now Captain Marvel. Like, I've seen yeah, I've several seen, women, like, wearing Captain Marvel Yeah, stuff. and I think that's great. I, I love that, like, they specifically taking characters that they knew that they could get a new audience for. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Sure, like, women were interested in the MCU, but, like, they hadn't had a lead superhero film apart from Wonder Woman up until this point, and that was only a few years apart. But now Marvel can say, no, we have our lead female superhero now, and they also have their lead black hero with Black Panther, and that that broke bounds. Like, that movie won three Oscars. Like, we would have never thought 20 years ago that the Academy would have been like, that movie was groundbreaking and it Mm -hmm. should win an Oscar, like... It's crazy to see how much the MCU has done for nerd culture in general. Like, I know it's that, up the status. Like, yeah, like I think that even shows like Big Bang Theory wouldn't be as successful without something like the MCU. I think yeah, I think that the MCU and Batman uh, specifically, but like Batman yeah. was like a targeted like. There's this one character that everyone's okay with. Yeah. And MC was like, hey, literally any hero we put out, right. you'll all be okay with. I think the reason Batman was so universally accepted was because he had no powers. That, and I think it just the, like, history behind Batman. Right. Same and thing with Superman. I think either right. one of them can always, always be popular. They've been around forever, and they've always been in the mainstream spot. Like, whether yeah. it be a TV show, like how Batman had in the 60s and things like that. But, bef- but like... Otherwise, superheroes were, like, basically marketed towards kids, and then the people who grew up with them stuck with it. Mm -hmm. Like, you had, like, the Spider-Man cartoon and the X-Men cartoon, and then they finally made the original Spider-Man trilogy and the X-Men trilogy, and people were like, okay, this is where it's going to get, the big characters are going to get their own movies, and then... John Favreau takes a chance on Robert Downey Jr. Well, he said he was. John Favreau was going record and be like, "I wasn't going to do Iron Man without him." Yeah, and so like it's crazy to look back on that. But let's right. let Ryan. What was your your moment? Your moment you knew like 
this so, was a big deal. And not like, to you be, loved it. Not to be the copycat type person, but I seriously think Avengers. Yeah, was I, really, I think that's that, what everybody thinks. I remember going to the theater with you guys, and I haven't seen every single movie in theaters. Um, the first few, I want to say I saw Iron Man in theaters, but I don't remember seeing the second one in theaters. But for the most part, I've seen like, Probably eighteen or nineteen out of all the films. I don't mm-hmm. remember. I don't think I saw Incredible Hulk. And um, no, I'm kind of <laughs> probably glad I didn't. Um, uh, but I just seen Avengers. Um, not to echo what you guys both just said, but you guys went first, so I'm going to say a little bit. But just seeing a character, such strong characters on mm-hmm. screen. Um, you know, you have a little bit of nobodies to, you know, some big actors in there. Kind of a mix, but just seeing them, like, work together. And this is, like, your childhood of, like, when you're talking about superheroes, I don't care if it's DC or Marvel or anything, you want to see some crazy good action. You want to mm-hmm. see some teamwork. Um, not to cross paths with Marvel or DC, but I remember watching Justice League when I was little, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah I, I, grew, really I grew cool up a DC shows. kid. Yeah. I grew up a DC kid, so when this came yeah. out... when but. And DC was just behind the times on yeah. actually making a good live, For live action, action. Yeah. and collectively getting everybody on screen. And so when you got to see all that together, you're like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool. And you got to see a little bit of Iron Man before, and you got a yeah. little bit of a build up. It yeah. wasn't, but like just seeing them on screen together, especially mm-hmm. Hulk, I thought that was just awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so whenever they did such a good job with that movie, um, you're like, okay. Like, this could actually be legit. And they were talking about new other plans and yeah. all that at that point. So you're, like, ready to go at They're this like point. Ten, like, this is a, this is plan. an end. This is, like, like what? this is, like, this is a big universe that yeah. they're about to create. So for me, from an action standpoint at that point, and then just having such big heroes together, actually getting to work together and stuff, is, like, something that we've never seen before. And so for me, that was probably what really got me like, mm-hmm. a lot more interested. Like, yeah, the movies were good before that, but, like, actually getting to see all that yeah. going on, you're like, okay, this is, like, legitimate. Like, this is, like, they're, um, you know, and you're starting to hear rumors of other heroes coming in and stuff. And, I yeah. mean, Which we'll do a future of the MCU, just for the record. Yeah. going to not do any future post-in-game talk until after in-game comes out, because right. I want to, like, we need to let that sit in, and then we yeah, can put our theories. Because we could yeah. talk forever about, like, rumor. But anyway, um... But yeah, so Avengers was my probably my movie that I was like, okay, I'm I'm in this for the long. I think like nine out of ten people you ask would agree. I mean, like Iron Man was that one that like I knew that was something special, but it wasn't until Avengers that solidified that special. Right. Well, and like Iron Man was cool. Yeah. But yeah, we're so used to those solo films and stuff. Right. So like, like, well, okay, we have an Iron Man film. Yeah. It's almost like you were rewarded for watching all those movies before. Well, Avengers is the payoff. Right. It's it's not. It's the end of Phase One. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not the whole, like, it doesn't hold your hand. It's like all these characters got their screen time in the other movies. So you so can watch you can this watch with those, or without. Yeah. Like, if you're like, man, if you want to know what happens to them, go back and go watch Go back and stories. watch Thor. Go back and watch Captain America. Go back yeah. and watch Iron Man 1 and 2. So, with that, let's move into favorite villain. Okay. Um, for me, it's Thanos. Do we all universally agree? I can't argue. I we I don't think we have anybody have a strong enough <laughs> argument to say Thanos is not the best villain. The only other one I would argue is Killmonger, which I think yeah. any given day you could put either one of them number one. But I do think Thanos yeah, is. Yeah. Killmonger is up there. I mean, there. you just killed fifty percent of the having. Game, well, so. even Loki's also up there, but like not not I not, think not on the same level. He plays with the emotions too much. Right. That I, I well, can't Loki, like make him a true villain because he has good good yeah. things. Well, Loki him. Thor one is not good. Loki yeah. Avengers on is a good villain and right. good, like antihero. He's a good. He's a good villain that I like watching, but Thanos like motivation, oh, yeah, no, Thanos motivation. performance, all this is a great, Thanos great succeeds. villain. Yeah, like at the end of the day, Thanos succeeded in what he planned to do. Yeah, and we're all still freaking out about what's going to happen in Endgame. You know, like, and that's all because of the character of Thanos. Yeah. Like, I mean, making me care about Thanos is like the most impressive thing. Right, like they they really give him a whole lot of emotion. And that scene where he tosses Gamora off the cliff and Vormir to get the soul stone. Yeah. He cries. Oh, tears? Not for him. Right. Yeah, no, like, it's insane how well the Russos directed that character. Because I don't think any of the other directors in the MCU would have captured Thanos yeah. like that. I do think it is impressive to see what they did and mm-hmm. see how they've created this villain that is not just... He's not, you're, he's not just a villain for being a villain. Like, yeah, he's I a villain think, because, like, 
in his mind, this is the stuff he went through. And so why should anyone else have to go through that? Yeah. I think that is super impressive. I think 10 years from now, people will hold him on like the same heights as like Heath Ledger's Joker and I do too. Darth Vader. Now, granted, in game, if it screws him up and ruins it, but Infinity War Infinity exclusive, War exclusively Infinity War, we're saying that here, Thanos was is an amazing villain. Yeah. Um, I agree. So since no one has any counter arguments, because I mean I thought I mean like Vulture is a good villain too. Vulture is good. I think the reveal the reveal in Homecoming where, that is like, a really powerful moment where everyone was like when he opens the door and you're like did he kidnap his family and he's like no this is his family like yeah. you're like what <laughs> what it, it's classic Spider Man comic yeah. book and like, Killmonger's good I like Killmonger a lot yeah but yeah um, to the the capacity of Thanos like, yeah. And affecting then, everything and all things. Justin and Hammer from Wonder Man. <laughs> <laughs> and withholding all the Avengers, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't argue a better villain in that Right. Case. And that I just wanted to make sure, before we continued on, so we're going to do a uh, favorite hero. And I will go last. That's fair. Which one of you, you can pick, which one, whatever one of you wants to go first. So... I spend a lot of I'm time a, thinking about this yeah. for myself. I... I... See, I have a. I, it's hard for me to figure this out because mm-hmm. I've been in. I've thought about. I'm in debate over constantly <laughs> over this. Mm-hmm. So, can can I say a little bit of a couple? Is that? Fair? I mean, I guess. I guess. I, I, yeah. Okay. So Captain America has always been my like natural pool, right? Sure. I love Spider Man. Mm-hmm. I grew up with Spider Man. Tobey Maguire, rest in peace. Um, He's not dead. It's future proofing. Yes. We don't know what will happen in the next two weeks. Okay. <laughs> the time rest of in this peace recording. Is his character. Okay, so everyone in the MCU, rest in peace. <laughs> 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 They're all going to die. <laughs> this is going to kill them all. Um, and then, like, Thor. They reinvented Thor. Thor post Ragnarok. I can't. Like, I can't see him. Oh, it's I don't so like so hard. Yeah, and so I've grown like into one. Thor uh, a lot. And then Doctor Strange, I have a little bit of a weak spot for Doctor Strange just because of. That, He's so, so if I somehow cool. mix them all up, um, but from I guess from like uh, from the standpoint of like for the last few years, I would have to probably say Captain America. Um, I know. No, it's fine. Um, I I've like na- it, from like the beginning watching like all this happen and everything as him a natural leader and just yeah. like his. The American way kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's my favorite character. Uh, there's a couple factors. Like, obviously, Thor's a lot more cool, like, in this last... Power-wise, uh, yeah. Power right. wise. Like he's gotten a lot. Uh, but at the same time, and I think his acting has, like, he's gotten more comfortable, like, after Thor Ragnarok. So it's hard. That's one the thing. The reinvention of Thor really but, like, made I mean, change my opinion. genuinely on, down, like, deep down, I have to say probably Captain mm-hmm. America. Okay. Um, so, I actually agree. For me, it's also Captain America. We're all doing this! Captain America, baby! Let's go! Okay, so for me, um, I agree. Like, I used to be, up until probably Civil War, I was like Team Tony Stark all the way. And even a couple years after Civil War, I still like lean towards Tony. Now, if Spider-Man had a bigger presence in the MCU, it would probably be him. Like, granted, he's been in three movies now, but, like... Yeah. Right. If he had started out a lot earlier, right. if he, then if I could... If he was a starting pro- character, my opinion would Sweden probably change. Um, <laughs> I we also, two puns today. I also <laughs> have... Um, I also have a really soft spot for how they took a character I knew nothing about with Star-Lord and made him a really Yeah, I think the Guardians watch. overall making me care... Yeah. Making me right. care about them all... And not knowing any of them. Like, I knew right. of Rocket and Groot. I mainly knew of Rocket from Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah. And that was it. Like, for me, I didn't know who any of them were. So they took a character like Star-Lord and they made me really care about him. And he's really well written. Yeah. Like, I can almost rule him out because I almost like Chris Pratt more than the character. Or like, it's part I like, of the yeah. part. My thing would be yeah. is I like Star War- Star-Lord. <laughs> Star-Lord. <laughs> we talked a lot about Star Wars Day. Star-Lord in Guardians 1, but Guardians 2 and Infinity War. I like his humor, but I don't like his character as much. Yeah, yeah I think that... He ruined it. I think that they're going through a period of them just really trying to build him up a lot more yeah. in terms of just... Instead, like, he comes off as, like, this selfish jerk and he's the leader of this team. But, like, you also see where he struggles and where he fails. Like, yeah. he's the one who's failed the most in the entire MCU out of all the characters. So, like, he has a lot more human characteristics compared to somebody like 
I don't know, Thor. Like, I like Thor. Thor, it, Thor is the same way that I see Superman, where it's like this overpowered being. Mm-hmm. Your your limits on like how humanized you can make them is not the same. Like the yeah. the way I relate to them is not the mm-hmm. same. It's more like Thor's in a situation against a more powerful being, not against. Yeah. I mean, maybe emotional, then, yeah, with Hela, but yeah. like and overall, they, they it's humble just not Thor the same. a lot. Yeah. And I almost said Thor, and I almost said Tony because Tony goes through a lot, even. From the very beginning, like, you can tell he was, like, this arrogant playboy who didn't really care about anybody. The only person he would slightly open up to was Pepper, and then he got captured, and he had to fight his way out of that cave, and he became Iron Man. Yeah. You know, like, and you see him change a lot over the course of those movies, and you learn to really like Tony, even though he's still kind of a selfish, arrogant person. But the reason I picked Cap was because Cap doesn't change. Like, Cap, for the most part, stays the same as a character. Yeah. Like, and I think that works because Captain America is the man out of time. Like, Captain America is taken from what society calls the greatest generation in World War II, and he's put into this modern world, and he's trying to adjust to it, it, but his moral compass stays the same. Well, like, I, I like about... Yeah, I, that's what... I think is, one, of the, one of the most attractive things about him... Captain America does not buckle in front of anybody. Yeah. Like, even his own teammates. And what like, I like about it, too, is that he had that fight before he was buff and strong. Right. And he's weak or whatever. And, I love... When we get to our rankings, I'll say why I love Captain mm-hmm. America 1 so much, but I love before he even gets the super soldier serum when they're trying to figure out who they should take to test... They throw that dummy grenade down in front of them, and he just immediately leaps over. And I'm like, that right there was yeah. Captain America before he even yeah. got the serum. Like, for me, I was like, I could still see the same Steve Rogers standing up to Thanos in Endgame, even if he didn't have the serum. He would feel like he was compelled to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cap, for me, has always been represented by this quote. Uh, this is why you were chosen, because a strong man has no, who no, has known power all his life may lose respect for that power. But a weak mm-hmm. man knows the value of strength and knows compassion. And so, like, yeah. Cap, and they they really drive it home with the first Avenger, the Cap, Captain America, the first Avenger, with, like, that Steve has always been that character that stands up yeah. for what is right and what mm-hmm. is... Uh, Captain America is the character you want to be, but Tony Stark is who you are. Yeah. Right. And that's what I think is the best parallel. And that's why I think so many people are drawn to Iron Man. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's why, like, I love Cap is because, like, for me, Captain America is everything I want to be. Like, I wish... I was as, when like... When you think of a hero, you think of Captain America. Yeah, I think I was as heroic willing to just throw my life away like that for any mm-hmm. of, like, anything. Right. Anything that I stand by those values. And, like, Cap's character arc over the MCU, mm-hmm. like, is as good, if not better, than Downey's. Yeah. Like, I think, granted, Infinity War, he wasn't in as much, but, like, I think we're just building towards... Oh, I think Endgame is going to be his movie. Yeah. Like... I think as much as... In Infinity War was Tony's that like Endgame gave his caps, be, yeah. But like I think just like his his full arc, him and Bucky's relationship, yeah. Like all of that together is just been such a powerful thing. Where like there were moments where I like, I've I've feared for this character and like I've worried right. and wanted you just get, to see the you best. Get so concerned, yeah. And like Cap for me, I always liked Captain America even going into the movies. Right. I was a long time like after the MCU started, I was like Iron Man for life, like. This is such a cool character. How do you not respect it? And then, like, post-Avengers, besides the costume, I was like, I think this is the character I'm going to fall in love with. Yeah. And, like, I had started leaning that way, and Winter Soldier solidified that for me. Yeah. But, like, Captain America is the coolest Avenger. He is just everything I want to be and everything I wish to be as, like, a hero. If I ever got superpowers, I'd be like, I'm taking a Captain America comic book with me and being like, what do I say here? Okay, got it. And then just, like... Yeah. But, like, that's why I love him. And, like, mm-hmm. it's it's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt me a lot if he dies. I think we'll all collectively die inside. <laughs> but, like, everybody in the theater, if they see Captain America or Iron Man die, yeah. like, people are going to people are gonna cry. Yeah. Like, it's losing really an icon in America's culture right now. Like, and not even just America, the whole world, really. Like, everybody watches these movies yeah. and loves them, but, like... Seeing Captain America die would be brutal, I think, for a lot of people. And Iron Man right up there with it. Like, I think those are the two big ones that everybody... Everybody's like, it's either that character or this one. And then Thor probably now right behind those two. I I will say that... uh, 
I feel like we're a lot more prepared for Iron Man to die than Captain America. I think it's both ways. Because they've, I they've think those two, hinted at it so many I think those two are the ones that everyone's like, one of them has to die. Yeah. Or both. Yeah. So, like, that for me is more like an obvious thing. So, I'm going to be curious to see what they do. Mm-hmm. So, let's move to a favorite moment in the MCU. This is easy and tough because for mm-hmm. me, my, like, instant gut reaction is... When the heroes are losing, when they think they've overwhelmed, they're overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Out of the sky rains the Bifrost. Yeah. Here comes Thor entering Wakanda as the as Stormbreaker flies through and takes out a bunch of the Black Order's minions and just comes in yep. and brings Damn. me Thanos and is just like the coolest. That effect is so that, good. That it, yeah. probably is my favorite scene. One, uh, and this is going to sound a little bit different. When Iron Man and Captain America are going at it against each other. Oh um, yeah, and that final like that That's that last scene. Yeah. Um, I actually really like when they're like I mean about to kill each other. Yeah. Um, like I think that's one of the top scenes that's mm-hmm. happened so far. Um, I remember like hyperventilating in the theater because yeah. I, mean, I, I was, was I was, was really such a rough. big deal. And but I was like, like he's gonna kill Tony. Yeah. Like it, but like they just kept on going. Mm-hmm. But I remember the suspense. Like that yeah. has to be one of the top moments in the MCU ever. So yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm not sure if that's my favorite, but I think it's one of the top, uh, top yeah. moments that we ha- have to kind of remember, like where they've all came from. So yeah. and the struggle, it's not like they're all just, you know, all peas in a pod here. Yeah. And finally so, getting back together. For me, I debated between two moments. One of them was Thor entering Wakanda. The other one is in Ragnarok after he gets his eye cut out and Hela tells him that she's the goddess of death and she asks him, what, what are you the god of? you the god of again? He meets Odin. Odin asks him if he's Thor, the god of hammers. He get he finally realizes that the power has been within him all along. Yeah. He comes down on the bridge, mm-hmm. and immigrant song from Leonard Skinner yeah, is playing. That, and the lyrics to that song actually like have a lot to do with like Norse mythology yep. and everything. So like that song was perfect to play, and the effects and everything were really good. Yeah. I think that moment and where the chill, you get a lot of chills. He's wrecking all of those soldiers he's firing lightning blast at him he does that awesome spin twist move yeah the raiden like right yeah i was like this is like raiden from mortal Kombat, and like i do love it in um infinity war a lot i really do and i actually prefer the music in infinity war well because the moment the in, avengers the moment in ragnarok and this is the argument i've right, heard and i support that, this that's him coming back as the king the, of asgard and then infinity war is he's, him coming back as the avenger yeah for me, I think, though, that having Groot and Rocket beside him takes a little bit away from him. Not a whole lot, because obviously the moment is Thor's, yeah. like, when he yells, bring me yeah. Thanos. And they, this like, is, this when, is the when, cavalry when, coming when, in. When right. they stand there, and they're, like, doing that pan right. shot, and you've got like, that, I almost didn't like that they were in it, to be honest. But, I mean, you know, they're For together, me, I'm I just guess, like... like I, I really like the slow motion shot of Thor just like coming down yeah. and the soldiers are piling on top of each other to yeah. try to stab Thor. Mm-hmm. That was my phone like background for like a year of just that. Yeah. I was like, that is such a cool moment to me. Like what? that was the moment in that movie where I was like, okay, Thor has really like become one of the best characters in the MCU. I will say there are three other moments I want to mm-hmm. touch on just real quick. I am Iron Man. Yeah. That moment alone redefined because before that, the Everybody big... was like, I got to be... The big thing was secret identities. Right. That had always been a big thing in the, like, any, any Marvel movie, any superhero movie was, yeah. hey, we got a higher secret identity. So yeah. when that happened, big moment. Yep. We talked about it, but uh, Cap and the doctor talking the night before yeah. he was going to have a surgery and, like, the defining, like, why did we pick you? Yeah. And then, of course, that's my secret, Cap. I'm, I'm always, always angry. angry. Yeah. And then the circle shot right after. Well, like, he transforms, he transforms punch punches. the Leviathan. It just dies, and then yeah, like it's so the good. circle shot of them as the Avengers. Is we like, talked about that so much. Yeah, after that I happened. remember that happening. And we stayed at the theater for. A I remember time. literally everybody in my theater standing up and clapping. Yeah, my my theater like, just erupted. I've never since that moment stood up and clapped. One, I have chased. I have chased that moment forever. Yeah. Um, in the beginning of Infinity War, when Spider Man when he gets the chills or whatever. Oh yeah, the theater are freaking like went oh yeah, my crazy. theater, my theater gasped. That they, I they were like, like <gasps> I don't know why I remember that moment out of all, besides obviously Thor, but that has to be like one of the second moments because I don't know why everybody's yeah. so excited yeah. off the Spider Man hype, and then that happens uh, right there, and literally you just see his hairs just stand up, yeah. and everyone's like, ah, yeah. yeah. And I that's also, right when Stan Lee's like in it too. Yeah. I mean, it's just like that five seconds is just like 
Great. Another one is um, in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, their circle scene where they're all talking. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right before they come up with the plan. Like, you have this really heartfelt moment that's also interspersed with some of the best comedy in the MCU. I like the music a lot, too. It really mm -hmm. plays the emotion. When they're all standing up, they're like, uh, I will die next to friends. Right. That's a really good moment because... You don't know if they're going to kill these characters or not. We have yeah, no Groot's idea. sacrifice is also really good. Right. We are Groot is a powerful moment, I think, for a lot of people. Groot. Um, and then, of course, they have the dance-off. Like, <laughs> yeah. I love the theory that, like, of the 14 million outcomes that Doctor Strange saw, they took Star-Lord's plan for a dance-off. Yeah, with and, Thanos. But Thanos ends up being a miraculous dancer and they still lose. I'm like, <laughs> that's amazing to me. I really hope that somebody has just animated that for whatever reason of Thanos dancing. And they all fade away, like, just immediately. I know that won't happen. It's just weird and ridiculous, and <laughs> I love it. But, um, yeah, the best moment for me would have to be Thor coming back as the king of Asgard to save his people. I love that moment so much. He fights alongside Loki. Yeah. Hulk is there fighting the giant wolf. Valkyrie has come back to help. Like, she's accepted her place next to Thor, like... It's really good. Like, all the characters yeah. in that movie have something to do. I do think, even though I said that the Thor Wakanda, I do think the Avenger Circle shot is the defining moment for me. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's like, the defining moment. That's my favorite moment, I still too. think of that shot. I watch like, that clip yeah. a lot where it's yeah. just, like, all that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Where, like, Cap gives the orders, Hulk, smash. Yeah. Do you think that we get another circle shot? I think so. Oh, yeah. I think it's... I think that's, that's, so. a, that is, that's just something that, the, uh, like, that you don't... Like, already it, the shot of the Trinity. Them. Yeah. The shot yeah. of the Trinity walking to Thanos is yeah. already a moment. Like, even if that's on the movie, I will always remember that moment. I'll yeah. be like... And they're masters at those yeah. shots. Yeah. The people... Um, the, I mean, Another really good shot. Yeah. The beginning of Ultron. When they jump across the Oh, yeah, the, the comic book splash page. Oh, that's so cool. Like... And I like I do like the circle shot with all them fighting the Ultron bots. Yeah. yeah and I like really the good. shot where it's like the three of them shooting beams at Ultron. Yeah. I've but seen Age of Ultron. It's, it's been, been a, a few, while, yeah. yeah. Um, I watched it like six months ago. So, good unless there's like any other big moments you guys want to talk about. We're good? Okay. I think so. Spider-Man uh, Spider and Iron Man scenes, the, some of them together are great. Yeah, you're supposed to be better. Up. Well, yeah. that and yeah. uh, you're supposed to be better. If you're nothing without the suit, you, you don't think, deserve the suit right. at all. Uh, yep, and, yeah, I was about to quote and that. And then yeah. he, so. he lifts himself out of the rubble. Like, I love that. That's yeah. one of my favorite yeah. I wish, I wish he didn't hear comments. Iron Man say anything to him. I wish it would have just been his reflection. Yeah, he sees the reflection of the half mask. He's like, I am Spider-Man, and like lifts it up, but... Um, it's still good on it. So I still think it's a good moment. I we're gonna do it. we're gonna do our rankings. Okay. So here's how it's gonna work. Ryan's gonna start. You're gonna do six at a time for the first one. Okay. But you're not gonna spend that long on each one of them. Yep. It's just quick pros, cons, and why it's here. Three perfect. Okay. Um, number one, Incredible Hulk. So number twenty one. Or I mean, or number twenty one. Yeah, sorry. So I, Ryan's I starting down, at the down, bottom. Down. Yeah. yeah. Countdown. So uh, number twenty one. Yeah, number one. My number <laughs> one pick, Incredible Hulk. Best one ever. Um, I, I'm not going to say too much. It's It was pretty rough, and yeah. it's not even the same guy that's playing it. So that's all I have to say with that one. Um, uh, number 20, uh, Thor, Dark World. That movie is... Yeah, it's got Thor in it, but that's that's about all it's going for that one. I, I don't see a, a lot of great things in that film. There's not a lot of great moments. There's nothing I really remember out of that film. I'm just like, oh man, that was a really good scene. Yeah, there's a couple little things here and there. Yeah. Not out of the whole unit, out of all of them. I don't like that one that much. Um, uh, Iron Man Two is number nineteen for me, um, and I like Iron Man, um, but Iron Man Two. And this one can probably be debated a little bit, but. It just didn't stick with me that well. For whatever reason, I just didn't like it that much. It, I don't know. Um, uh, number 18, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is a little bit farther down than I probably wanted to, but when I was doing this, I couldn't really justify it going any too much higher, probably. Um, I love Ant-Man in general. I love the character and everything. Um, just for the movie itself and the plot, yeah. Uh, saving their mom uh mom and or wife Go to the mom. Quantum realm. yeah, yeah quantum realm. Realm. whatever yeah i get it it's a big deal all that and it was okay i like the first scene when he's like trapped or it, he's trapped in the his house and he, they, oh, yeah, he's with, like with, playing with his daughter Cassie, or whatever yeah. yeah and all that it's like cool and the ants and stuff but ant-man i think the the first ant-man was a lot better than the, the ant-man and the wasp okay. to be honest yeah um 
Um, and I couldn't move it up too much farther. Let's see. Should be at 17. 17. Um, Iron Man 3. I'm picking on Iron Man a little bit here, probably. Um, and I don't know. It's. I think it's maybe... I like Tony Stark. I like the first Iron Man. But Iron Man 3... There's some good things and bad things in yeah. it. Um, it was really hard to rank these, by the way. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah. Know. I'm yeah. Just no, like, trust me. I, like, I stayed up late doing like, this. I'm getting upset that I put him. I like, put Iron Man three where it is now, thinking of saying yeah. it out loud. But th- but then you keep on going. You're like, okay, well, I yeah. can't. It's harder to maneuver them um, without having a crazy chain effect. Uh, it's just a middle of the pack for me um, at this point. And my 17 is what I consider middle 16. of the pack or 16 or yeah. This should be the last one, yeah. yeah, One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. And let me find 16, because they're not in order. Uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. I'm picking on this one a little bit, too. Um, So, I know a lot of people like Ultron as a villain. I didn't, I think, obviously struggle with it. I think that there's a lot of pull. And I, um, but I think as a movie, as a whole, it didn't keep me... Compared to the other Avengers movies, which is what yeah. I'm comparing them to, because sure. it's an end of a phase, it's doing its thing, and that's how I compared each one of the Avengers. So, however you guys looked at it, mm-hmm. um, with that in mind, this is the worst of the Avengers movies for me. Um, uh, and it has a better villain, I think, um, obviously besides Thanos. Um, but, uh, in a way, I I even debated on some of that. I I just had a hard time putting it where I wanted to put it. Yeah. Maybe a couple m- more higher, perhaps, but it just didn't rewatchability on it. Yeah, it's okay because it's all the Avengers together. But yeah. like the actual story and stuff, it didn't mash up with me as well. And I'm not saying it's a bad movie by any means. Sure, this is my middle of the pack. Right. It was. There's like three bad movies, and the rest are like up in the air for a fight for the, like about everything else almost. So yeah, I could honestly tell you that for mine. Like, the bottom that three is my last are one, the right? bottom three. Yes. Yeah. So then no. now you'll do five at a time. Okay. Cool. So, okay. So, quickly, 21 is Thor The Dark World. Mm-hmm. I think the... I So here, I just went quickly. I'm Zach and me will probably agree. Honestly, I think all of them, at their worst, are a six. Yeah. I don't think there's any bad Marvel movie. Even even Hulk, which we'll get to in a second. <laughs> I think even at that, there's it's still watchable. But yeah. my pro... Like, pros, Loki and Thor's relationship is really good in Thor The Dark World. Yeah. Um... Cons is literally everything else. For oh, and Freya's death, Freya's entire death scene funeral is awesome. Yeah, like visually it's I, stunning. I don't, yeah, visually yeah. stunning. Mm-hmm. But like the rest of the movie is just not good. It's not mm-hmm. that it's terrible, but it's just it's it's a little below average. Um, next is Incredible Hulk. So twenties Hulk. Um, I like it just a little bit more because I like Edward Norton's take on the Hulk. Yeah, I don't like where it would have gone. Future MCU, but just the standalone Hulk movie, and it did introduce a lot. We got Thunderbolt Ross. Mm-hmm. I like the Abomination versus Hulk fight, even though it's not like great. Right. But, like I like that. I like the ending where he's like Hulk smash and like he thunder destroys it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Nineteen is Iron Man two. It's just unfortunately too much going on at once. There's too much happening, and that's the problem. Is that at the end of the day, like. It suffers because it tries to do uh, the demon in the bottle mm-hmm. while, also, while also setting up a, being a sequel to Iron Man 1 and being a prequel to the Avengers. It's yeah. the same thing that BVS suffered with is that it's too much happening at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, 18 is Thor. I like Thor. Hmm. This movie wasn't like amazing for me. But at the end of the day, it's, it was... It's hard. Yeah. At the end of the day, it was one of those I'm like, I didn't... It was... When it came out... And this is well standby. When it came out, it was it. You made Thor work. You made a movie yeah. where you're like, I believe in Thor. I understand this. But overall, besides him and Natalie Portman, which Natalie Portman just gets worse. <laughs> yeah. Like I did not care about anybody else. I didn't care about any of the Warriors three. Sif was only okay. Like at the end of the day, the, Loki wasn't even good yet. And like I just didn't care. It was one of those I just watched because I was like, Hey, I gotta watch this before Avengers. Yep. Um. So it should be seventeen. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Even upon a rewatch. Still do not care. I get that Yondu's death is a big deal. I get that everything that happens in that movie is very emotional for people, but I don't care for it that much. It's an average film. Like, it's not unwatchable, but the moments, it has such it has some great moments. Like with uh, Mantis and Drax, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then Star-Lord and his dad, and Star-Lord and Yondu. There's a lot of things I like, but unfortunately there's a lot of stuff, there's way more that I don't like. Mm-hmm. that balances it out or actually overrules it and kind of just like for me I don't care for Guardians 2 as much as I wanted to sure um, and the last one should be 16 right we talked about that yeah mm-hmm. Iron Man 3 
Okay, so we were close on that one. Yes, I was actually I was um I was kind of shocked. Iron Man three, it has one of my favorite things, and it shows consequence in the MCU. Yeah, Iron Man dealt with PTSD, but unfortunately, the villains just aren't good. And this, at the end of the day, like realistically, doesn't have much repercussion in the rest of the MCU. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. Like, let this be clear. I don't think it's a bad movie. And I actually do all of these. I really like. There's yeah, not that's, one that's that I do. The yeah. Hardest part at the about end of the day, this is like at the, at the end of the when day, when you have a low ranking on one of these, you're like, oh my gosh, you really didn't like that? No, it's not yeah, that we yeah. didn't like it. It's just right. Like any, we're like, just trying to compare honestly, good things to good things. Yeah, like like where we're at, these are starting to be like six point fives to sevens. Like yeah. that's where we're unfortunately starting to hit. Mm-hmm. And so, like for me, I like Iron Man three. I actually like it a lot. And I'll defend it, but at the end of the day, like it's not better than a lot of other compared things. to right. everything yeah. else that's going on. So, so, but that's just my little since it's all you shotgun yours. So remember okay. till right. sixteen. Okay, so twenty one is Thor: The Dark World. I think we all can agree that this is one of the lower end movies for yeah. the MCU. I think that a lot of people felt like it was more or less a lot of the same as the first movie. Thor didn't change that much as a character. And all the characters around him aren't as interesting. Loki is ramped up a bit. Yeah. Um, especially after coming off of being the villain in Avengers 1. Yeah. Like, that gives us a lot. Everything with Odin and Asgard is interesting, but they're so focused on the Dark Elves that you feel like you're not supposed to care about Asgard as much. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is the villain is the most forgettable villain in the MCU, I think. Yeah, like, Malekith is the most forgettable Malekith one. just doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, and they defeat him in my opinion, relatively easy. Kind of stupid, too. The yeah. the best thing about Thor Dark World to me was that it shows us more of one of the Infinity Stones, which yeah. is the Aether, which is the Reality Stone. After that, That's I'm just all like... That's I had to offer. Yeah. For me, I'm just like, it's just Thor doing what he did in Thor 1, but this time Loki's on his side. Yeah, okay. Um, number 20 is Incredible Hulk. Yep. Yeah. Um... I pretty much agree with almost everything you said, Brandon. I think the final fight is really good. I like Ross a lot as a character being introduced. I don't think Edward Norton would play off the Avengers as well as Mark Ruffalo does. Mm-hmm. So I do agree that the recasting was a good decision. There's a lot better comic relief probably. Yeah, yeah. I think he I think he handles comedy a lot better than Edward Norton would. Mm-hmm. Um, and you need that sort of levity with a character like that because there's a lot of stuff with Hulk that's really sad and depressing because everybody hates Hulk. Yeah. Like, so it's like you have to have a character that like you can look at and root for them and care about them and not want to just see Hulk. Because mm-hmm. I felt like watching Incredible Hulk, I was like, just get to the Hulk scenes because I don't care about your banner as much. Like I like his version of Hulk, but Bruce Banner, I'm like, you don't seem to have as much charisma as Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. That's just me. Um, 19 is Iron Man 2. Um, I... I really Sorry, wish I really wish that this movie and Iron Man 3 would have been one film. I've said this a couple different times, but like you said with Demons in the Bottle, like I think that they should have captured that after Avengers 1. Like Iron Man 2 should have came out after Avengers 1 and had elements of 2 and 3, I think, of him struggling with PTSD, the Palladium killing him so he turns to alcohol. I think yeah. that would have been a lot better for him as a character. And then maybe you throw in the fact that like, uh, Justin Hammer is trying to like just one up him on like technology mm-hmm. and stuff. I think that you could have taken all of that stuff and made one movie out of it, and it would have been a lot more powerful for Tony. Yeah. And then you could have introduced War Machine, and he would have had a backup plan in case he'd have died, which he sets up in Iron Man Two. But there's just there's just not enough in Iron Man Two for me. I felt like they were just like we have to have a movie here, and we have to have one character appear as the main character for Avengers going in, like. They wanted one character to be, essentially be, this is the leader yeah. of this entire thing. So they were like, let's do Iron Man 2. Because I feel like you could have done that with any of them, but... Well, ju- we need to move quick. Right. Uh, we can get into the, like... The, yeah. the reason was the time gap. It was right. so long between that they had time to do a sequel. So. Right. Uh, 18 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. I actually have it in the same place 18? as Ryan. Yeah, this is um, interesting. I think that the stakes in Ant-Man and the Wasp were just really, really low. Well, it's number one for me is Hugh Barrows. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Paul Rudd, and I love I love the character of Scott. Uh-huh. I think everything about him is really good. I just feel like the stakes are really, really low for him in this movie compared to the other characters. Mm-hmm. And him being the title character... He doesn't really do a whole lot. This is more of a Wasp film than it is an Ant-Man film. Yeah. 
And I not that I, di- not that I disliked Evangeline Lilly as Wasp. I just felt like they pretty much were like, we need to do a movie before Endgame and Captain Marvel. And I felt like the stakes were just really low compared to literally any other film. The comedy works really well, and that's yeah. why it's... Paul Rudd's a funny guy. Yeah, that's why it's a little higher for me. Um, 17, age. 17 is Iron Man 3. Dude, like, I, I knew we I literally have I knew that 17 this, is we, Iron we, Man. We were probably going to be really similar. And the then bottom it, and top, I feel like, will be similar. and then it's, it's yeah, The middle, the middle is going to be where it gets weird. For me, again, going off of Iron Man 2, I think that you could have captured a lot more of the alcoholism stuff in Iron Man 3 because it would have been post-Avengers 1. Tony dealing with PTSD is a good thing, and it helps with his motivations for what goes on in Age of Ultron. Yeah. So that there is some continuance there. That's why it's higher for me than 2. Like, him destroying his suits and everything and realizing he's still Iron Man, but he changes his focus towards... Um, protecting the entire planet and like trying to find a way to where they no longer need these heroes i think is a really interesting set piece for him i just don't like the villain like in that movie i Mm -hmm. i hated the misdirect of the mandarin like it just didn't work for me and then 16 is thor um i i really like the fish out of water stuff with thor on earth i think that's really fun and i like how he gets his hammer back at the very end And I really like that the climax of that movie takes place in, like, New Mexico and just some random town. And it's Mm. not, like, it's not some big, heavy metropolitan area like New York City or Los Angeles. Like, they put it in such a different environment. That's where he landed at and everything. Right. So it makes it a little bit more realistic if you actually Right, like, he could could have landed literally anywhere on Earth. Because, like, I feel like almost every superhero movie, it's like, oh, it has to take place in a big city. They always end up in a big city. It takes place in a big city because that's where all the people are, and that makes the death toll higher and things like that. And I'm like, that movie did something different, and I liked that. Mm -hmm. I like how Odin strips... Thor, of all of his powers, pretty much right at the beginning of the movie. That makes it a lot of fun for me because Thor is on a path of redemption in that movie, which is a lot different than what he is in Dark World. Dark World is just Thor being Thor at the end of the movie, and we already got that. So it was like, at least that movie was doing something different with Thor, and that's why that's higher for me than Thor Dark World. All right. Okay, so that that was your five, right? Yeah, six, that was six. a six. Yeah, okay, so, so I'm ready. So now to go. you're on fifteen. Yeah. Okay, so fifteen Thor. So yeah, uh, back to back. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to echo too. I'm basically going to echo what I agree almost everything that you said on that. Yeah. Um, Thor, that first movie, uh, it was good. Uh, I. It's a good, it's a good movie. It's just good, not, right. it's not great. It's a good. It's a good starter movie, probably. Yeah. But it's a good I, phase one film. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to copy too much off what you just said there. Fourteen Captain Marvel. Um. For me, uh, Captain Marvel, it was a little dry, a little slow. Um, I wanted to see more. I mean, mm-hmm. if she's, I, mean, I know that she like gets to figure out her powers throughout, and yeah. she realizes that she's like a lot more powerful than she is at the very end. I get all that. Um, uh, Brie, it's Brie Larson, right? Um, yes. Yeah. I was, uh, uh, she's an okay actor. Like, I, I think I'm gonna like her probably more later on, and she'll probably grow on to me. This is her phase one kind yeah. of film, so yeah. And we're not used to it. we're being spoiled right now because we have all these like advanced like stuff. So I don't know. It just didn't it didn't clean onto me very well um, for whatever reason. So, but I think overall it was a good movie. It wasn't just horrible or anything. Um, 14, let's see, down to 13, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, I'm going to say kind of what you're saying a little bit with, um, there wasn't a lot, I, I, I think you start to grow to the side characters a little bit more, um, and you start to like, you, I love the community together, but mm-hmm. actually like Star-Lord doing things and actually being more active in the film, I didn't feel it as much. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's good, great scenes out of it. There's funny scenes, um, but like the stakes and everything, it just wasn't didn't swing me as well for whatever reason. It just mm-hmm. this is different. Um, Thirteen. Let's see. Twelve. 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 Ant Man. Um, so I love Paul Rudd. This is uh, it's just different, mm-hmm. and it's almost like its own little thing. It's hard for me almost to compare it into the MCU, to be honest, to some certain point because. 
he's not very interactive with the MCU until now. I mean, yeah. it's a little bit, but he's sure. still, we still really haven't got him really involved heavily into it. Right. Which, obviously, this is his chance, probably, yeah. Infinity in this, uh, the next Avengers to be part of that. But, um, like I said, his hero is unique. Not, he's not like some really cool character by any means. It's funny, it's a little lighthearted, which we need a little bit of, of mm-hmm. that throughout. Um, between Thor Ragnarok, um, uh, obviously Guardians of the Galaxy and that, that yeah. gives your relief, your tension. And then obviously Mark Ruffalo um, with Hulk. Uh, let's see, 11, 11, 11. Um, Captain America. This one was, this is where basically from 11 on, mm-hmm. it got really hard for me to put everything in there. Um it's his first movie, which for whatever reason, first movies for me are really hard. Like on individual uh, characters, yeah. are hard to really gauge because they're all, you know, most of them aren't just crazy great yeah. by any means. But I really like, um, and it's hard to say that he's still eleven on my list. And um, but I liked his origin story. I mm-hmm. I really, and I'm gonna start more doing more compliments than like <laughs> um, hating. But I I enjoyed the movie itself. It's a little slow at times, I think, um, but they're focusing on more of the emotion, his courage, and getting him mm-hmm. ready to go, like what we've kind of already talked about a little bit, so I'm not going to reiterate uh, a lot of that. That'll be your last one for now. Okay, and then we're 10 down, so yep. perfect. So 15 for me is Ant-Man. Okay. I like Ant-Man a lot, and again, specifying what I said, reiterating it is that I think all these are like 7 up. We're starting to move that yeah. way yeah. of like, this is their range. I like Ant-Man for me, though, overall. It just wasn't one of those that I think about a lot, and it's one of those that, like, yeah. I enjoy it. And the same thing with 14, which is Amy and the Lost. And it's not memorable. It, yeah. It's just not memorable. For me, 15 and 14 could be switched, so I'm mm-hmm. saying they both, is that, like, in any any given day, I could switch them places. Mm-hmm. I don't think it has good villains, but I think Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, uh, the girl that plays Cassie Lane, all of them are great. Mm-hmm. I love everything about their characters, but at the end of the day, I don't think about it the same way I do some of these other films. I don't think, I don't love it as much as I do those. Yeah. So, like, those two movies are basically the same and I think the the way they use the growing and shrinking stuff is cool mm-hmm. but like at the end of the day like I love Paul Rudd as character but like it's not neither one of them are like top tier they're like that middle of the road yeah so then like I said 15 Ant-Man 14 Ant-Man the Wasp so 13 is Captain Marvel really like Captain Marvel a lot more on a second viewing mm-hmm. but again I mean like I agree like Brie Larson isn't like fully in it because it's still her solo film like yeah. i'm gonna be more curious what's like after in game yeah. with her in that and then seeing that forward i love her chemistry with samuel L. jackson though like mm-hmm. all of, anytime the they're on screen the yeah anytime they're mm-hmm. on screen together awesome but like the villain overall is just kind of average um i like glenn close no it's not glenn close um that's the guardians one of the guardians women um i like the actress that plays the villain though especially when she's like "Ooh, i like this jacket and all this stuff like oh, that scene where she yeah. like, gets her powers mm-hmm. that moment where she's in there i think is an awesome moment mm-hmm. but like yeah. overall like her binary form's cool like when she goes up and fights the ships and like scares yeah. ronan off like those are cool moments but like overall i don't love the movie but i do really like it um number 12 is avengers age of ultron this is where we start moving up especially more in like my scores mm-hmm I love Ultron. I actually do think he's a great villain. I'm um, not a top tier, like not to love a Vulture yeah. or some of these other ones, but like still a good villain. Mm-hmm. And like I like Age of Ultron. It shows repercussions of everything that happened in Avengers. And um, I like the introduction of Vision and showing off the team working yeah. together more. Yeah. I think there's a lot of good stuff about Age of Ultron that unfortunately just bogged down because the anticipation, the hype for Age of Ultron was right. crazy. Yep. I, there was no way that movie was ever going to meet expectations, mm-hmm. and that's the problem. The Hulkbuster versus Hulk fight, still awesome. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good There's a lot of good things that, about so. Age of Ultron that are good. It's just unfortunately due to when it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, number 11 is Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is one of my favorite, favorite heroes in the Marvel comics. So leading in the MCU, I was very excited. I like him a lot. Um, the problem with the first movie is they wanted to get really quickly to his powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they rush a lot his of why I like him. His so rushed. Yeah, so. like his first, the first act is rushing him being like, losing his ability to use his hands properly. Mm-hmm. So like, that's my biggest negative with it. And that's unfortunate because I love everything else about it. Um, so that's where I'm at. So yeah, number 11, Doctor Strange. So Okay. Uh, number 15 for me is Captain Marvel. Um 
I do really like this film. Uh, this is actually, for me, where it starts to get really tricky because I like the overwhelming majority more. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I could put Captain Marvel at, like, number 11 or 15. Like, I go back and forth on my feelings for the characters so much. Um, I love that this movie is as much a Carol Danvers movie as it is a Nick Fury movie. Um, I love everything with the scrolls. Uh, ben Mendelsohn is phenomenal in that movie. Absolutely mm -hmm. love him. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is number 14 for me. I really, really like everything with um, Peter and his dad, and I love everything with Gamora and Nebula in that film a lot. Uh, the final fight is really good. Yondu's death uh, is really moving. It's one of the major deaths in the ser in the franchise so far, for me at least, um, just because of how much it meant to Star-Lord and inevitably what that meant to the team. Um, they really focus a lot more on Rocket in that movie. Yeah. Um, and I love that um, they changed Groot for that film. Instead of having it just be Groot with his memories, it's an, an entire new Groot. Yeah. Like, he's a baby, he's learning, and they're having to protect him and look out for him. I thought mm -hmm. that made it a little unique. Um, 13 was uh, Captain America First Avenger. I love this movie. I wish there was a bit more action in it. But the first half of the film, set in the 1940s time period, is really good. I love um, Steve start like when he starts to really get an eye for Peggy. I like all of that stuff. I think that their chemistry is really good, and it's the it's that relationship that we want that we'll never get to see. Mm -hmm. um, I love the ending of this movie of him waking up and realizing that he's in the future now. Yeah, like, I miss my date. <laughs> right, like, like he's like I had a date, and it just cuts to black. Like, yeah. Like, we, we already start to feel sympathy for this character even more than we already did. Because, like, he was already that Boy Scout hero that everybody loved. But now it's like he's yearning for a life that he can never have. And that really is set up and expanded on throughout every appearance after. Um, number 12 for me is Ant-Man. I really like the feel of that movie. Um Scott is out looking for redemption in a weird way, but then he's dragged back into doing a life of crime by thieving and everything. I really like that this movie, when it boils down to it, is a really clever heist movie. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's sure, it's a superhero film, but the overall heist is the main point of the film. I like him training to use the suit and everything. I really liked the Quantum Realm the first time a lot more than in Ant-Man and the Wasp. I thought it was unique then, and it was... Really interesting. I really liked the effects that they played around with. Um, and just everything with him and his daughter was really good. I love um, the Thomas... The tank engine tank fight. Engine yeah. fight. Yeah. I think that's really funny. That's one of the funniest scenes in the MCU. Right. Um, I just really love it. Uh, and then number 11 for me is um, Age of Ultron. Um, I think Ultron's a really good villain. I really like how they introduced um, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Vision. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, they killed Quicksilver in that movie, but, like, I really liked everything they set up in that film. Like, we we finally get to the point where we're, like, okay, the Infinity Stones are going to be the major thing going forward. Yeah. Like, and it was about time that the main Avengers were dealing with that directly. They were, like, we've got to find out what's going on with these Infinity Stones we get the second cameo from Thanos at the end of that movie where he says, I'll do it myself. Like, they're clearly setting up Phase 3 and the wrap-up of the Infinity Saga with that movie. Um, I love the opening. I love the scene where they all go to Hawkeye's house. I love that they even are already there planting the seeds for Civil War. Every time somebody tries to win a war before it starts, innocent people, people die. Every time. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um... So that's my number 11. So, Ryan, back over to you. Number 10. Okay. Uh, number 10, Doctor Strange. Um, yeah. Doctor Strange uh, is one of my favorite actual characters um, in the MCU. Um, Hero-wise, he's a little different, but I like I like the different approach. I like, obviously, uh, Cumberbatch as an actor. Um, it's, uh, it's just a little bit different tone, um, and I liked it. Um, it's just a lot different, um, and it made you think a lot more in this movie than I think the other movies a little bit, and I appreciate those type of movies. Uh, number nine, Iron Man. And this is where everything is so crunched down. Um, Iron Man obviously really started this, started this thing. I really enjoy that movie. It's a little slow, I think, at the beginning. That's part of the struggle, though. It shows that struggle. It shows the time that passes and everything. 
Um, but I think it's still, it's obviously a foundation piece to this whole MCU. It's very important. Um, I remember watching it um, and thinking, wow, like, this is actually really cool. And I didn't know anything about Iron Man before. Like, I knew a little bit, but nothing crazy. Um, number eight, Black Panther. This is very painful for me to put Black Panther ahead of Iron Man. As a movie as a whole, Black Panther is well done. I don't think Black Panther as a character, and the hard part is, is we don't know very much about Black Panther besides that movie in a little bit with um, Infinity War. That's it. And it's hard to it's hard to adjust something because we're thinking of Iron Man as this whole story. Um, so I've been back and forth this whole time thinking about it. I was going to flip it maybe last second. Um, but I went ahead and stuck with it. As a movie, as a whole, Black Panther is a really good movie. I'm not going to argue with that. There's a few things I could say, but we don't have time for that. So I'm not going to say anything on that. Um, seven, Thor Ragnarok, which is also... I could flip that around. I enjoy this movie a lot. Yeah. I love... I love the bonds uh, with Hulk and uh, Thor. I love the venture they basically go on together. Um, and Thor really finds himself di in, a, in a different way in this film. Um, and I just really enjoy it. it the rewatchability, I could watch that over and over and over and not have a single problem with mm -hmm. it. And it's just fun to watch. Um, and I think, I really feel like Thor in this film really comes out of what Thor should be Yeah. Um, in this. Not only as he's as strong, but he's fun. Um, and he really comes out as, uh, you know, they come out of this and, and it directs, it leads, literally, his last scene is right into Infinity War. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that transition there. Um, and my last one of this round, six, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, for me, uh, first... Not knowing anything about Guardians of the Galaxy, hardly. Not coming mm -hmm. from this world of nerd, nerd world. Um, I thought this was a really good, a good film uh, across the board. I I've had a hard time. I could have put it probably a little higher, mm -hmm. um, and debatably. Uh, but I really enjoyed watching it. Um, I love all the characters together. i um, being them all being introduced and how they're introduced into like, basically how they're trying to kill. Uh, Star Lord and all that. Anyways, they're, I just love how they interact with each other and how they all kind of come together, basically, mm -hmm. in this one. I think they did a really good job of telling that, and then also just the uh, the chemistry and also just the overall, um, the overall, you know, at the very end they all come together and you know it has a it has a sweet story to tell with it, basically. Um, and so that that's my uh, ten through six there. Okay. So, again, this is where it's tough for it me. It gets painful. Um, yeah. Number 10 is Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, I love this movie. Um, I didn't like it at first, but as time has run on and gotten over the montage scene, mm -hmm. for me, I love it. Um, it's a great story. It's a great, like, view of a character who's always been bullied, who's always been down on his luck, and, like, yeah. getting that power and showing, yeah, hey, like, a weak man understands compassion. Yeah. So he will always honor strength, where a strong man never knew it, like never had to work for it. Mm -hmm. um, I love Captain America as a character. It kind of hurts me to put it this low, but as we progress, it's, it's just, just yeah. it's unfortunate. No matter what you yeah. do, it's painful at this yeah. point. Yeah. So number nine is Iron Man. Um, a great, great movie. Um, but as we've come with time, it's just unfortunately, as it set the standard for what an origin superhero movie should be, it has with time just other MCU it's movies just, have taken its place. And sure. I love Downey. I love what it stands for and everything it means to the MCU. Uh, number eight is Thor Ragnarok. Reinnovating Thor was the hardest dip thing, I think, because every Thor movie before sucked. Like, it was so hard to, like, tell people, to convince people to watch Thor. So, like, when mm -hmm. Ragnarok came out and it, like, revitalized, re-energized Thor, it was awesome and incredible and I loved it. Um, the chemistry between him and Ruffalo were great. The Hulk had an amazing screen uh -huh. presence. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff freaking Goldblum just steals that show. Mm -hmm. Like every time he's on he, screen, I'm just he, like, mm. he, he just steals the show. Mm. And, and I don't think, and I don't think he doesn't even really do that much to steal it. Yeah. He just steals it. Mm -hmm. He's just a natural, natural presence. This is where it gets hard. Number seven is Spider Man Homecoming. Woo! I love Spider Man. Love it. <laughs> it came off the board. But, it came off the board. But overall, wow. these next few for me, I love even more. Yeah. And so, like, I love Spider-Man. I love Tom Holland. Never get this wrong. Like, 
I this movie for me has a special place because it is Spider Man's homecoming. Yeah. It is everything I ever wanted. I want him mm-hmm. back in the MCU. I wanted him home. I wanted the Vulture's a great villain. His struggle's great. It's a comic book brought to life. Yeah. But unfortunately, number six for me was just way more epic, way more of a tale that I enjoyed, which was Black Panther. Like this one was hard not to put higher. Honestly, I yeah, almost put I it love Black I almost Panther. put it much higher. But I was like, at the end of the day, these other films that will come next I liked more. But I like T'Challa. Here's the thing about T'Challa in that film. Is it's more of T'Challa's the way of the old mm-hmm. and Killmonger is the mm-hmm. way of the new. And T'Challa has to learn. That's why I think his character development for us isn't as grander because we're we agree with Killmonger. Right. Like that is how we should be moving forward. But at the end of the day, like I love the villain. I love T'Challa. I love the world they create. Wakanda is alive and breathing. I like the suit. I like the action. I love the moments. I just think of sometimes like the character moments when like him, him and Killmonger facing off in the combat. Yeah. Like just no powers. Straight fighting skill is one of my favorite moments. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff I love about Black Panther. And I could go on and on forever. But we've, we're just so we've cut this down in time. So like overall, I just... I love Black Panther, and even on rewatches, I love it more. So, like, it's one of those films I think it will go up higher and higher as the MCU grows. So. Okay, uh, my number 10 is Doctor Strange. I really loved everything with Benedict Cumberbatch. We literally have almost identical. We have a very uh, similar list. uh, We all three are very close. I figured that would probably happen because we all have a lot of similar tastes in a lot Mm -hmm. of ways. Um, For me, I really like that this film gave us a different character overall like there's no other character like dr strange i think in the mcu like i mean scarlet witch is kind of there with magic and stuff but like Mm -hmm. dr strange takes it to a whole other level um i love the way he beats dormammu a lot yeah Mm -hmm. i i think that it's nice to see characters overcome struggles in different ways than just strength and killing an enemy Mm -hmm. i think i think the idea that dormammu is still out there is interesting to me like, that he could come back if he wanted to, but he probably won't just so that he doesn't have to be bothered by being stuck in a time yeah. loop. I love the implications um, of just him learning all these different spells. And, like, he starts off as such a horrible person. Like, and he goes through so much in such a short amount of time. And by the end, I'm actually rooting for him. Whereas, at first, I'm like, you're such a jerk. You don't deserve any of the praise that you get as a person like and then by the end i'm like okay dr strange sees the big picture i love the scene where he's fighting in the hospital in the astral forms Mm -hmm. and he ends up accidentally killing the guy and he freaks out about it he's like i took an oath i swore to never kill people and all these other things and like you see that like he he's really humanized i love it hold on wait okay Uh, for me, number nine is going to be Black Panther. Um, I really love the setting of Wakanda. I love Killmonger. I love everything that they have going on with um, T'Challa. A lot of like what Brandon said I really liked. Um, I love the music in that movie. I love the costume design. Like, There's so much about that movie I love just because of like how different it is. Yeah. Like You have this unique setting. You have a character who has become the leader of a country, which is different than any other character in the MCU. Like mm-hmm. none of, th- none of them are given that level of power over other people. Yeah. Like sure, they're powerful well, characters, and Thor's the and king Thor, of Asgard yeah. Yeah, now. Yeah, but yeah. like when he started out, he wasn't. Yeah, like that's true. T'Challa's first appearance, he was the prince, and he was already the Black Panther. And yeah. He was preparing for that role, and then you have, you have just great side characters in that movie, like. It's very rare for the MCU to have the entire cast of side characters be that, like, charismatic. I love Shuri. I love M'Baku. Killmonger Mm -hmm. is probably the best villain next to Thanos. Yeah. Like, all of them are really good. I love um, all the different tribes. I love Claw as a villain, too. Like, he's a minor villain in that movie, but Andy Serkis plays it really well. Yeah. Um... And he, he was also in Ultron, so like they already were planning on having... Yeah, you got a little bit of build-up to it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, 
So this is probably going to shock you and Brandon both, and I kind of wish he was here. He had to step out for And this is for, for number minute. seven? Number eight. Or number eight, okay. Number eight for me is Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> right? Like You guys are both... Oh, what? my like, gosh! I, I struggled so much with this. Yeah. You know, like... That's Because I, I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Uh-huh. I love... Everything with him and Tony. I love Vulture, and I love him being in high school again. I love all the different dilemmas he has as a character. The problem is, and it's not even that it's a bad movie. It's the best Spider-Man film next to Spider-Verse, in my opinion. Uh It's that we'd seen it five times before. There is a a little bit of that repeat kind of thing. Right. And that was, as a person that grew up on Spider-Man, I can completely understand that. And I wasn't really... I wasn't really ready for another Mm Spider-Man, but Tom Holland's performance definitely made made me confident that, okay, we're okay here. He is the only character in the MCU that has been portrayed multiple times. I mean, you you have Hulk... Like, Hulk's now been portrayed by three different actors. Yeah. But, like... It's just not, not taking not on, it seriously. Not, on, the, not yeah. on this level, you know? Like, like now we have this new Spider-Man, and everybody's going to have the one that they, they prefer. We've actually had our own episode together yeah. talking about Spider-Man. Um, for me, like, it's not even that it's a bad movie or anything. It's not that I think it's any better than these other ones. It's just... These other ones offered something different for me, whereas Spider-Man, mm-hmm. like Spider-Man gets to come home and is involved with like the MCU now, but his first film, they don't do anything really new with the character. They do what the other movies have already done, at least their first film. Yeah. Like, like he gets his powers, he's in high school, he's struggling with different issues. So it's a little bit of a repeat story. It kind of is. Yeah. I mean, that's Spider-Man's it, origin story. It's an, it's but... an updated origin for Spider-Man, mm-hmm. which I really appreciate. I love Spider-Man's origin. He's my favorite comic book character. Oh, yeah. Maybe later going into it, like, I know we all agreed that Captain America was our favorite in the MCU. Mm-hmm. And I even said, if Spider-Man was involved early on, he'd probably be if, my favorite. It, yeah, and I and that's what I kind of said too. But like, it's just, it's hard, it's hard to have him be introduced so late in the game right. uh, with it's other like, spider Man. For before. me, I'm just like, I think one of the big reasons that it's a little lower, they haven't fully developed this Spider-Man yet. Mm-hmm. Like, the other two versions of Spider-Man, for example, they both knew how to use their spider sense, for example. Yeah. Like, and for me, I get that he's still developing and learning his powers and everything, but, like, I think myself and casual fans are like, well, why doesn't he have his spider sense in Homecoming? You know, like, mm-hmm. you kind of see it a little bit, but, like, Infinity War made made it very clear he has his spider sense. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. And even Civil War did, you know, like, when they throw, like, the door at him in that yeah. movie and he's like oh god and he like jumps out of the way it's like mm-hmm. so they don't really do a whole lot with his spider sense which to me is his coolest power yeah um number seven for me is gonna be iron man uh, okay. i love iron man one um it would be higher but all these movies at this point are just to me so good like iron man is a movie that i could watch over and over again i think my favorite thing about this film is how grounded in reality it is compared to the rest of the MCU. It is. Like, Tony Stark isn't kidnapped by aliens. He's kidnapped by terrorists in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he's kidnapped doing a weapons demonstration over in Mm -hmm. a third world country that the United States was at war with. Like, of course he's going to be of valuable interest to them. Yeah. You know, like, the science behind the arc reactor to me makes sense. It Mm -hmm. works for a comic book movie. Versus just, oh, I was born with these powers, or I was bitten by a radioactive spider, or yeah. I was, I got gamma radiation, or, mm-hmm. like, Tony and Cap both have such similar basis in reality with um, Captain America got the super soldier serum, Tony yeah. Stark got the arc reactor, yeah. you know? And for me, I love the transformation of the arrogant um, playboy billionaire philanthropist that Tony is. To becoming a lot more humble of a person, and he, you get to see that through the whole right. series too. That's what makes right. Iron Man so special now mm-hmm. to us. I think even more. I love, I love that 
even all the way back at the very beginning, they were already setting seeds to make this giant immersive universe. You have Phil Coulson there, mm -hmm. and that's clearly there for them to set up S.H.I.E.L.D. Yep. You know, like, even way back in the first, like, Iron Man movie, like, the whole reason that Phil Coulson is wanting to talk to Tony Stark is because they're preparing the Avengers Initiative. Exactly. And that's why in Iron Man 2, Black Widow is there, and she's continuing that. Uh -huh. I think the villain in this movie is really good. Um, Jeff Bridges is a different kind of villain than what, like, I mean, Obadiah Stane. Yeah. Right. Like, he's this swarmy, like, slimy businessman who's, like, out to get Tony and is, like, trying mm -hmm. to get him out of his own company so that he can take over because he doesn't agree with Tony. He thinks that they should still make weapons and all this up, all these other things. But he wasn't there in that cave with Tony. Like, when Tony was in that cave and he met Jensen, mm -hmm. he found himself, you know. And I love the moment right before Tony's about to leave the cave and he goes back to get Jensen. He's like, come on, let's go. And Jensen tells him, don't waste your life. Yeah. That, to me, is one of the most heartbreaking lines in that entire... Uh, in the entire series, not just that film. Hmm. And I love that the first place that Tony Stark flies off to in his Iron Man suit once he's ready to fight is the village that Jensen is from. Yeah. Like, he goes back there to f protect those people and kill all those terrorists, you know? Mm -hmm. This isn't your typical superhero, you know? Like, Batman doesn't kill people, or he didn't up until BVS, you know? Like, in the movies, like, he would, but they were always like, well, that was just the circumstance. Like, on a normal day, Batman wouldn't just kill a guy in the middle of, like, the city. Like, the yeah. supervillains always died just for the sake of a movie narrative, but, like, um, Spider-Man didn't kill people. Green Goblin got himself killed, you know, like... For example, like they, yeah. we didn't see them killing like the characters. Iron Man, we see him gun terrorists yeah. down and blow up tanks and like. There's no mercy. We see him working on his suit and stuff. You know, like sure we know Batman has his technology and everything, but we get to see Tony Stark actually working on it and making improvements and learning how to fly in his suit and all these other things. And I'm like, that to me is just really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, we get to grow with him becoming Iron Man, which is why that's so high on my list. It is the perfect origin story. Yeah. Um, and then number six for me is Avengers 1. Okay. Um, I think Avengers 1 is really good. Um, it's the film that got me invested in the MCU, but and it's still phenomenal. Like, don't get me wrong, I love it. But at the same time, I feel like its plot relies a lot more on having seen the other films up to that point. Just like mm -hmm. all the Avengers movies do really do a point. But that one specifically, like if you didn't see Thor, you'd be so confused on who Loki was. You'd be like, okay. But then later they spell it out for you. They're like, oh yeah, that's my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. He's adopted. Like, <laughs> He's I, I love... Yeah. The, the reason this movie is so high is its sense of humor as well. This, this is the movie where I think the MCU got its charm as well as, like, its general love from the people. Everybody who watches that film can think of specific moments that they thought were hilarious. Yeah. Like, Thor punching um, Hulk. Uh-huh. Or, no, Hulk punching yeah, Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or... Tony Stark being like, that man is playing Galaga. Mm -hmm. He thought we wouldn't notice. Like, there's just so many funny moments in that movie as well. Like, they need to see them all together. Right. It's no. the first time we see them all together. Like, all of them, in a weird way, kind of get their own origin within the movie. Yeah, a little bit. Like, you get Tony Stark. He's looking for stuff underwater at the mm -hmm. start of the movie. Cap is introduced punching the um, punching bag and reflecting on his time in World War II, Thor comes in landing on top of the Quinjet with lightning coming down mm -hmm. to take Loki away after Loki, like, came back to Earth. And then, like, I love the trope that they started in this first Avengers movie and literally every single team up movie since we've had our protagonists fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the first one that does that. It's like, who would win in a fight? Iron Man or Thor? Well, we're going to give you that fight, but we're not going to tell you the answer. Mm -hmm. Who would win between Thor and Hulk? We're not going to tell you. <laughs> like, yeah. They just let them fight, but mm -hmm. then by the end it's like, oh, you were here for an Avengers movie. Here's them teaming up to take down this giant <laughs> yeah. alien army that's come out of nowhere. And actually, I have to take back what I said about the Infinity Stones, because all the way back they set up the Infinity Stones here. We didn't know that they were the Infinity yeah. Stones yet. 
But the scepter and the tesseract, the space and the mind stone yeah. were there from the beginning. Like, so it, it's just so cool to see how it is how these films are just so massive at this point, but they're all connected. Mm-hmm. You know, and Avengers was the first case of that, so that's why it's my number six. Okay. Perfect. Ten through six was Doctor Strange, Black Panther. Homecoming, Iron Man, and then Avengers One. Are you, you going to cut that part out? Yeah, I've. This is. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing with this because we've jumped a lot. So, uh, all right, just hurry up and turn on that. Uh, let's see. And I guess it'll, it'll be my it'll turn. Be you. Yeah. Yeah. So, let me get this. And we're, I'm, we're doing five. We're starting off with yeah, five. Five, five through two. Okay. Perfect. Oh, five through two. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, my number five is Captain America Civil War. Okay. Yeah, okay, whatever. So, um... That was me bashing Ryan's head on the table. I'm so sorry you couldn't visually see that. <laughs> Help! Help me! I'm just going to squeeze the stress ball here <laughs> while you guys um, work on your issues. Yeah. Reasonings like why'd you like it? It's, it's just number five. <laughs> I think you scared him a little bit. It's just number five. <laughs> What's number four then? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just really funny. It just so, is. Uh, number four. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to start over? <laughs> No, let's keep this. This, this makes, is too good. This makes sense for us. <laughs> this is just number four. Um, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Okay. Um, we we just we're talking about Spider-Man, but uh, I I really liked it. Um, and um, you know, it's a good number four. It's a good number <laughs> four. <laughs> I'm sorry, we were very distracted right now. We let now. Ryan out of his cage, and now we're going to have to send him back. Um, but yeah, so S- <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming <laughs> is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so Homecoming. I really, really liked Homecoming. Um, Tom Homlin's awesome. Uh, and I felt like he really captured what Spider-Man was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Ty- uh, Tobey Maguire... Um, you know, has his perks and, you know, negatives, pluses. Um, Andrew Garfield at the same time. Um, Zach and I, uh, a few episodes ago, talked extensively about this for a little bit. So, I think Tom Holland, Tom Holland, gosh, <laughs> I'm falling apart right now, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not good. What is even happening? I don't know, but Just we're going to keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We went from... And we went from 100 to zero real quick. <laughs> uh, but I I really, as a starter, for the third Spider-Man in the, few year, the last few years, um, I think he really embraced this role with his own movie. And I think he, uh, it, I think the story itself and the supporting characters um, were good. So that's why I have it number four. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it from... From the start to the end, without really too many breaks, um, and then number three, uh, Avengers. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna echo off just a little bit what we said before. Um, this was my this is my movie that really got me got me going in this mm-hmm. uh, in this whole MCU. Um, and there's nothing that could probably be. In that movie, when you when they do the little panel, what we were kind of talking about earlier, and they're all together in that center, just there's nothing that has beat that vibe of them being together, um, and that's when you really knew this was a, a legitimate deal. So I had to put it up there into that, and I mean this it was a good movie from the start to finish. I thought so on that, but and then number two, oh this is gonna this is where I've been in debate a little bit, uh, Infinity War. At this point, um, we have said this, mentioned this a few times. This is my same problem that I have with Star Wars: The Last Jedi to what we're about to see in a few months. Um, 
Infinity War Part 2 could change what I think of Infinity Part 1 a little bit as a story itself, just because of it cuts off. It's mm-hmm. not finished. The, whatever the conclusion is, we haven't found that conclusion just yet, at least on this story itself. Um, Infinity War, obviously, uh, you, you've you got so many so much buildup for the past 10 years at this point. Um, everything, that there's so much at stake. Uh, and then, obviously, 50% of everything dies. Uh, they've got a massive problem. They can't figure out how to solve it. And then they thought they had a game plan, and it still didn't work. Um, so there's a lot of struggle here. You've got a villain that's beyond anything that we've ever seen, probably, in movie history. Um, you've got... I mean, there's so many different accolades of ways you can go, probably, with approaching this movie on mm-hmm. why it's so good. Um, And I think the best thing as a movie standpoint, even without the characters itself, having that many characters, giving them that screen time, allowing those characters to have those moments, implementing them all together, tying everything in, and giving Thanos the story that he deserves, Mm -hmm. um, and actually you you almost feel sympathetic for him for a little bit, which is the best villain, which we've talked about that a little bit. But also, you tie in something like a villain like that, Give him enough where it's almost like his own movie to mm-hmm. a certain point, or a part of it. And you fit all these other heroes in, tie them all together, get them to work together and do all this stuff, and have enough time. I mean, it's a long movie, but dang. I mean, there was not a single part where you're like, oh, that wasn't very good. Like, I mean, almost the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You're just going, 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 going. And I've rewatched this multiple times now, and I'm still, like, I already know what's going to happen, but I'm still very into this movie yeah so that was my number two so um number five is guardians of the galaxy um i love and i'm gonna make this argument again later on you could take the marvel logo off and have just put out guardians of the galaxy still same effect Mm -hmm. it's another one of those that broke the comic book mold that it's not a formula it is these characters you just love them you grow on them i mean they grow on you like everything about them are is awesome and amazing and like i love the chemistry the team has and the ability that Marvel gave to James Gunn's vision that I care about all of them. Because, like, before the movie came out, I was like, I'm going to care about Star-Lord, Rocket, and Groot. I was like, outside yeah. of that, then I'm Drax and Gamora are just there. But by the end of it, I'm like, I like all of them. They give all yep. of them great depth and character. And they have got great comedic timing, great moments together, a great message, and, like, an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the soundtrack is what, I think, just puts the cherry on top mm-hmm. of this movie. It's already a Sunday. It's a Sunday that I'm already in love with, and I have the cherry right there. I'm like, yeah. mm, mm, mm. you've just you've done it, Gun. And granted, the Guardians two, you know, you could take, make it. I mean, it doesn't. There was no way Guardians one would have been followed up by something that was as good. Like it was lightning in a bottle. Yeah, because they're, you're being introduced to something. Yeah. And once you already have that again, I mean, it's not the the uh, the thrill of it is it as there. Not saying anything. So number four is Avengers. This is really hard for me because this is what I consider the Godfather of what has become the MCU. This is the movie that realistically, as much as Iron Man kicked it off, mm-hmm. uh, Avengers caught the ball and just kept running. And has we have not slowed down. We've hit a few bumps, but we've never slowed down since then. Mm-hmm. That's the movie that I chased the midnight over and over again, waiting for the same audience reaction, waiting for the same feeling of walking out of that theater. I'm hoping Endgame captures it, but like, I've never been moved that way by a comic book movie. Mm-hmm. Like, not in the sense of like Logan or something more like yeah. depressing. But, like, something of, like, as an action film, like, in pure enjoyment, like, I was blown away. Number three is Captain America Civil War. Overall, this is Avengers 2.5. Like, this is the... Yeah. I understand it is Captain America's story throughout. Like, it is fully him and Bucky and Iron Man's story. Like, this is Iron Man getting closure and Captain America getting closure and both of them understanding that they are, like, Cap understanding that he's out of time. Mm-hmm. Like, the, what he wants new... Well, Winter Soldier starts, he, Civil War finishes, of where he wasn't trusting the government, he just fully didn't trust them. That the Avengers mm-hmm. should be a separate thing. That in the introduction of Spider-Man and Black Panther, and making me especially care about Black Panther, mm-hmm. showing the chemistry that our Ant-Man has with the team, the amazing airport fight, and the emotional final battle um, in the old Hydra base. Like, all that... Like, this movie should not have worked. And yeah. I, I'm going to say that again in a second, but this movie should not have worked. 
And for it to be a Captain America story, at the end of the day, still proves that, like, I mean, everyone's like, this should have been called Avengers 2. No, like, at the end of the day, it being Captain America's story is what makes it amazing. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, is his story. Um, everyone, I think, gets a good moment to shine, whether or not you agree with that. But, like, a giant man introduction. But, like, yeah. there's so many great things. And then uh, Infinity War, of course, my number two. Um, I love this movie. Great villain. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could we'll go on and on about Infinity War, especially as in game comes up. Yep. Yeah. Next episode, um, that like I love Infinity War. It is a movie that should have never worked. I felt like the entire time that I was just turning the pages of a comic book. Mm-hmm. That like I was reading that, and that's what I've I've cha- I, that's a feeling that I loved. That was the same feeling I had watching Avengers, but this to like an extreme because we now exist in a world where Doctor Strange is being kidnapped by aliens and Spider Man was chasing after him. Yeah. Like, I, that moment in the theater, like, I teared up only because I was like, this is real. Mm-hmm. Like, this is happening. Yeah. Like, I, I got to live to see when everyone put aside their differences, Sony basically screwed themselves over, and, like, here is <laughs> Spider-Man existing yeah. in the MCU with these heroes. Um, I love Infinity War, um, but unfortunately there's one I love more, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so number five for me is also Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, really close I... I almost flipped Avengers 1 with Guardians of the Galaxy, but um, for me, I think Guardians of the Galaxy is a more perfect team-up movie. Um, I think that what they did really well was they introduced five characters that nobody would really ever heard of, and they just make you care about them, and it doesn't feel like it weighs down the overall story. Like, it's these characters, they find out about this Power Stone... And they've got to find a way to stop Thanos from getting it. Thanos gets basically an extended cameo in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like, sure, Ronan's the bad guy, but, like, we all know that he's working for Thanos. Mm-hmm. You know, and, like, there's greater threats even than the guy who's literally going to destroy an entire planet out there. Yeah. So it's like, this world is really starting to get bigger. This is our first look at that, which I really love all the cosmic stuff that they've been doing in the MCU. I hope that... That's the direction they continue to go moving forward because after Infinity War, it's like, I don't feel like the problems on Earth are going to feel nearly as important unless they're super personal to that hero directly. Yeah. Like, I don't see how you make... You can't go robbers. grander. You right. have to go, like, personal. Right. You have to get more personal. Um, for me, Guardians, so Guardians was, like, the first step towards that. Mm-hmm. Um, number four for me is Thor Ragnarok. Um I don't think any of us have mentioned Korg yet. Oh, yeah. The I funniest agree. character in the MCU yeah. was introduced in that movie. My opinion, anyway. No, like, I'd agree with that. Like, I, I know some people think that other characters are funnier. Like, I know a lot of people think that Thor is just as funny or that um, Star-Lord is funny. Iron Man has some really good quips. I mean, every line Korg like, says is basically yeah. quotable. Yeah, everything so, like, Korg just... says is just funny. Yeah. Like, even after Asgard is destroyed... And they ask him, like, where Meek is from. He's like, oh, Meek's dead. Like, or he's like, this can be a beacon for all uh, and then he's like, outcasts. He's the like, there, as long as the foundation is still good, he's like, oh, no, it's And gone. then the planet just mm-hmm. blows up. He's like, oh, sorry, those those foundations are gone. And I'm just like, okay, like, I love this character. Like, um, I really love everything in Ragnarok. I love the reinvention of Thor mm-hmm. as a character. Like, from the ground up, they stripped almost everything away about Thor that people came to know. And, like... To me, after Dark World, I think almost everybody would agree that apart from the Avengers that have powers, he's the lowest one that people cared about. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody... I think more people even cared about Hawkeye after Ultron than they did Thor. Right, and I think that's the thing going into Ragnarok. They kept saying that it would be the Winter Soldier of the Thor franchise, right. which at first I didn't get. Yeah. But then... Mm-hmm. Looking ahead, it's like, yeah, right. renovating Thor and then changing... Right, and now we have Thor going into Endgame, and we're like, wow, I really care about Thor just as much as Mm -hmm. I do Tony and Cap. Like, Taika Waititi took a character that everybody was like, if he died, I probably wouldn't care, to now it's like, okay, this character's awesome. Everything about this character is great. They took everything about that character and stripped him down to his weakest point, and he had to build himself back up. Mm -hmm. They, They humbled a god. Yeah. Like, and I loved that. I loved the sense of humor the movie had. But also, just, like, from the very beginning, they set up that Thor had to destroy Asgard. Like, the beginning with Surtur and everything, that comes back immediately at the end when he realizes he can't beat Hela. That's another 
situation, like why I said, why I liked Doctor Strange's ending. Like, it wasn't our hero beating Hela. It was the thing that he was trying to prevent he had to cause. Yeah. Like, I thought that was a really cool way to end that movie. And then, of course, it ties in directly to Infinity War. Um, the humor is good. It's mostly all improvised, from what I understand. Like, 80% is... Yeah, I've, heard, I've always heard between 60 to 80, so you just kind of... So it's like, I think that's really fun. Like, you can tell that the actors in the movie are having a good time. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a movie that can be super serious, but also super funny. Everything on Sakaar is really good. I love the battle between Thor and Hulk. Like, there's no stakes mm -hmm. there or anything, but it's kind of like we get that rematch from Avengers 1. Uh, number... Sorry, my phone went dark. Number three for me is Civil War. I I love Civil War. Um, the introduction of Black Panther and Spider-Man is really good to me. Mm -hmm. um, there is one thing that I wish would have happened in that movie. I think that when Rhodes gets hit by Vision, I really wish he would have died in that moment. Now, I... I don't agree with that, and well, we're not gonna go like into depth because we need to like move this. But right. um, they said if if Rhodes had died, everyone would put aside their differences. I guess that's true. Like it, you know, like yeah. But I mean, if we're basing it completely off the comic, I think other characters died before. Well, the comics died. is a lot right. Different. It's a lot grandiose in scale and everything. I don't know. Like for me, I feel like it's a great film, and I I do agree with you that it's a cap movie. But I think most people looking at it do see it at Avengers 2.5. I mean, it is the Avengers the, break up. It is know, to an like, extent, but it's still, like, at the end of the day, like... Right. The it's still centered around it. Yeah, the I story love, around... Like, even mm -hmm. the third act is all about Cap. Like, yeah. I loved Zemo as a character. A great villain. He's a really good villain. Like, obviously, he's not going to be fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Black Panther like Killmonger did or wiping people out like Thanos did. Uh -huh. But, like, his brain and his, like, his knowledge and just... His cunning ability was what made him a good villain. Like, he was a different villain than anything we'd gotten yeah. up until that point. You know, like, they say Loki's smart and he's the god of mischief, but I felt like Zemo was, like, on a whole other level of just causing trouble. Like, he broke up the Avengers. Yeah. Like, his plan set that in motion. Um, the best thing about Civil War, I think, is that there's an argument for both sides. Yeah. Between Cap and Tony. Like, by the end, I think that you're supposed to realize that Cap is right. Looking back at it now, at least my opinion now for a long time i used to be like no cap you should have told tony everything about hydra and his parents and everything but like that's like the one mistake that cap made yeah in the entire series and that mistake ultimately leads to the avengers losing in infinity war right well but i mean both of them thought emotionally right like, that was the problem is both of them thought with their emotions right. instead of their like it's, this is the movie where we see cap finally get to his darkest point yeah you know like he protects his lie essentially and i really like that because it gave it made cap more human mm -hmm. like because realistically he could have been like okay we got to stop bucky and we'll take him back to the u.s and everything like if he was thinking logically he would have known tony would have tried to protect bucky yeah because it would have kept the avengers together which is what tony wanted from the beginning like that's the only reason he even signs the accords to me it's just like you have this huge argument and you have no idea what to do and I love that they break up. I think that it made sense in the moment. I thought it was placed perfectly at the start of Phase 3. Uh -huh. uh, number two for me is Winter Soldier. So I know that that's your guys'. Yeah, there's nothing left. One. So, like, mm. like, so I'll just talk about Infinity War right now. Okay. That way you guys and I can talk about Winter Soldier. Um, Infinity War to me is just a moment in the film that probably will never be topped. Except for with Endgame or yeah. whatever the MCU does next. I agree. Like, the moment where you see Spider-Man chasing after Doctor Strange, you're like, this is real. Like, yeah. how... This is Avengers 1 on steroids. Like, and then you give us a compelling villain that wins. Like, there wasn't a movie like that that I can think of before where the villains, like, triumph. And, like, it's like, what do we do? Like, I mean, I guess you have, like... Empire Strikes Back at the very end. Like, our heroes are essentially defeated, but they're already mounting up to go to Tatooine in that movie. Yeah. Like, in this this film coming up, we have no idea what the plan is. Like, they're responding to the snap right at the end, you know? Like, and the movie ends with, to me, the rightful character with Thanos. It cuts yeah. on him smiling. He does exactly what he says he's going to do, and then 
he says that he's finally going to rest and watch the sun rise over a grateful universe. I love that he thinks he's right. Uh-huh. And he he fights with conviction, you know, like, apart from the Gamora scene of him sacrificing her to get the soul stone, an outsider looking in could honestly believe that Thanos has a point. Yeah. Like, and I love that he's so convinced and so crazy to think that he's right. That makes a good that makes a good villain. He yeah. is the perfect villain for all the Avengers. So we're at number one okay. for you guys. So Winter Soldier, I'm gonna touch on it real quick. And then you guys can add your yeah, we'll... For me, Winter Soldier mm-hmm. is like I said with Guardians. If you took if you removed Captain America and Falcon and all the MCU yep. ties, that would still be a great spy thriller movie. Yep. Yes. And so that and this is I knew from when we saw it at the early screening that this Winter Soldier was something special. Yeah. Um, it is um, the Russo brothers' first outing with the MCU. Yep. It was the movie that redefined Captain America, that turned him into not just solidifying him as my favorite, but a lot of people's favorites. Yeah. It started the journey that Cap went on. It started the journey our Avengers went on of no, no not trusting. Yeah. It sets the groundwork for everything, the rest of Phase 2 and Phase 3. Yeah. Like, yeah, our, the other movies came before, but, like, this movie... Was what set like the Avengers on their path. They went down. It's the tone shift. Yeah, it's the moment that you were like, people started taking the MCU more seriously. Mm-hmm. And like, I get it. Avengers is like the moment that everyone jump jumped shit or jumped onto the boat. Mm-hmm. But like, I think Winter Soldier proved that hey, these standalone movies can be phenomenal. Yeah, and that's and that's I think that was the first true standalone film since or, Iron Man. Yeah, that. I mean, that was truly just like wow. Yeah, yeah. like that was a movie that. A lot of people spend many years developing just mm-hmm. to get to that point for that mm-hmm. one movie. But not only did you do that, you also tied it in with an existing series. Yeah. Yeah. I love that it feels like early 70s and 80s spy thrillers. Robert Redford is a oh, great, so great character in that movie. Like, I'm glad that they got established actors like Samuel L. Jackson and mm-hmm. Robert Redford mm-hmm. in that movie. And then you throw in the chemistry that. Um, Chris Evans has with literally everyone in that movie. Yeah. Like, between him and Scarlett Johansson, like, you think they could be an actual couple? Like, and I think people wanted that after this yeah, movie. Yeah, there was a lot of debate. And I mean, like, like him and Anthony Mackie is great. Yeah, no, like, they made me care about Falcon. Yeah. Like, and I, going into it, I was like, I don't really care nearly as much about Falcon as I do literally anybody else. Like, I always thought Falcon was a joke just from the comics that, like, at first glance, you look at Falcon, and you're like, what are you going to do? Yeah. But they made him cool. Like, they made they made you care about him. Like, even going on later, like, when he's on Cap's team, like, he's viable in the fight. And, like, mm-hmm. they established that early on, that, like, he's a soldier with this amazing tech. Yeah. Um, uh, dealing with showing Peggy as she keeps fading in and out. Oh, god, So heartbreaking. The drama that they set up in this movie, that... That movie has humor, but not nearly as much as any of the mm-hmm. other MCU films. That is a drama before it's a comedy. Yeah. Like, wholeheartedly. Um, I love the set piece of Nick Fury escaping. I love the chase. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I especially love the fight over the bridge and into yeah, the, the, the street. Mm-hmm. Like, the choreography. Like, I still watch, like, making up it's videos so to good. show them practicing. Where, like, Cap actually does it, or... They do the knife flip and Cab actually does it and all that stuff. And it's just yeah. so impressive. Mm-hmm. It's so cool to see that, like, these aren't, like, overpowered beings firing energy mm-hmm. beams at each other. These are, like, tested soldiers that are, like, really seeing who's the better fighter. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love that about that scene. And then when the mask comes off, like, that reveal, like, we know yeah. that that's the Winter Soldier. Well, some of us did. I definitely, in several of my screenings, heard people behind me go, Bucky! Or, like, freak out <laughs> that he was like, alive. What's going on? But, like, to me, like, him catching the shield when yeah. he Yeah, oh my it gosh. Him, that's so freaking <laughs> cool. Like, Winter Soldier himself is a good villain. You yeah. know, like... And then you have everything with Hydra, like the reveal that they've been around the entire time. There's just a lot. There there's just so a lot much to, yeah. There's so much to chew on in that film. Yeah. Like, like um, the senator from Iron Man 2 is actually with Hydra. Like, what? Like, there's so when much When they going said, when on. he whispered, hell, Hydra, Hydra. Yeah. I remember in our theater, everyone gasping yeah. and being like, <gasps> I was just like, 
There's so much depth to this movie. Yeah. And everything that happens in this movie changes Cap's perspective. Like, mm-hmm. his whole reason for not signing the Accords is because of what happens to him right. in Winter Soldier. And Winter Soldier sets up a lot of the rest that will follow right. is trust. And, like, right. that's what I and think that's is where powerful. Zemo, that's where Zemo gets his plan for yeah. um, everything that goes forward in Civil War. Like, there's just so much going on there. You have great fight. You have great fights. You have high tension. The end fight between Cap and his classic suit versus Bucky. Yeah. And I love that when he meets Bucky for the final fight, Bucky's not wearing the mask so that he's also dealing with what he's seeing as his past as Mm -hmm. well. Like, they're both conflicted going into that fight. And I love when he's getting punched in the face and he's like, then finish it because I'm with you till the end of the line. I love it. You're my mission. You're my friend. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's so good. Wrapping up. We have one last thing to do. I have written down my bet, and you will each tell me yours on what you think Avengers in Game Lake opening weekend. Whoever is wrong, so here's how the rules are going to work. So let's low. I'm going to put it low ball, so we don't. Um, let's say it makes two hundred million dollars opening weekend. Let's say I bet two ten, and you bet like one ninety. No. The split it, yeah. So it, well, yeah, or no, lower than that. Whatever, closer. It doesn't matter if it's higher or lower. It's just whoever is closest, closest to the number. To it. Yep, and so the whoever's the the worst or the farthest away yeah. from that number loses. will take the punishment, which we will discover at a later time. <laughs> oh, so there's gonna be punishment for that. Oh, okay. you, have to watch, you have to watch Incredible Hulk. They have to watch Home and Watch again. <laughs> Ten times in a row. No, we gotta find a ba- another no, no, bad no, no. movie. We gotta, we gotta find a bad superhero movie to watch so that we can appreciate the MCU even more. Catwoman. You have to watch Catwoman. I don't know. Or Spawn. Or Maybe Hellboy. Batman. Makeup, and Rob- the new Hellboy. Yeah, new Hellboy. That yeah, would be punishment. New Hellboy. Yeah, okay. Punishment. Yeah, that's fair. Is it, yeah, the new Hellboy is apparently it? Oh, really we haven't bad. Seen it. Oh, okay. We were gonna go, but then I spent a lot of money on dinner. It's like so. an eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Like it's really bad. So whoever loses, I know we'll somebody see. just went. I just saw somebody post about that they're about to go watch, and I was like, "This is gonna be interesting." Yeah. So whoever loses, so what is your, what is your bets? Ryan, since you started us on our list, I'll let you go first. Perfect. I am going to go two eighty five. Gosh dang it! What you is that? That was a usage, right? That is what I said. So, what do you want to do? Um, what are you gonna say? I said three hundred five. You said three hundred five because I wanted to break that three hundred million. I, I was thinking about it, but I'm I'm gonna play. It just I'm willing. To, I'm willing to watch Hellboy. I'm willing to take that <laughs> and for my dream of three hundred million to be done. You said two eighty five. You said three hundred five. I'm gonna say two ninety five just to be okay. Right there, everyone's ten apart now. Yep. All right. So whoever loses, which I think Ryan will win, just because I don't think it's gonna make. I don't think it's gonna make like a crazy amount of money. Like I mean, a cra- what, so, what was Infinity War? Infinity War was like two fifty nine, yeah. two sixty. So, I mean thirty. I mean I know another like, this 20, is the end. Yeah, but that's but still a lot. That's of money. a big gap. But I mean, it could happen. I mean, it it, could, with yeah. the pre sale tickets but and everything, we don't opening, know. That's opening week, and you can only max out so much. Yeah. So that's kind of what my. But I mean, like there are several. I'm seeing more showings popping up for Endgame. Yeah, they're being added because like Thursday night here in town is basically. Sold well, out. you got like six o'clock in the morning shows. And well, stuff. they're they're going until two. There are some. There are some that are going. Two, yeah. and then they'll open back up at six in the morning and just right, like go, they're just going yeah. nonstop. All right, so thank you again for listening. This was nothing coherent. Um, check us out on Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. Fall Zach at Jittery Jack and or Twitch TV dot com slash Jittery Jack and Eight. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. Make sure you follow us on all social media. Um, when we return, we'll be Avengers in game. We'll be back, whatever it takes. We're so close. <laughs> We're going to be crying. When you're listening to this, you will literally be seeing it that week. I am so jealous of you guys. You all teleported we got. What is happening to me? Okay, anyway, let's we are uh, stuck in a. We are stuck in the past. We're stuck in a time loop. <laughs> We're all screwed. Right. Thank you all. Goodbye.